Hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at a brand new printer from Creality. And you know what? This right now is the craze. And I printed it on a brand new printer from Creality, and that was the Creality Ender 3 V3, which is a super fast printer. And I printed this using Creality Hyper PLA. Orange, because it's appropriate. And yes, this is a airless basketball. Did it bounce? Well, make sure you stick around, because I'll share with you if it did with Hyper PLA. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the Ender 3 V3. We're gonna take a look at its features. This thing is fast, like super fast. And we're gonna see why this is my favorite Ender, like the favorite one. It's the best built, it's the fastest at 600 millimeters per second. And I'll tell you guys, it prints amazing, incredible quality. Check this out. So let's go ahead and check out the video. Now the Ender 3 V3 is a different class of Ender. Uh, this is a Core XZ printer that has speeds up to 600 millimeters per second. That's pretty mind boggling. Now the bed size is what you would expect and it's what I've commonly uh, have come become used to from an Ender, 220 by 220 by 250. But the speed is where it's at, 600 millimeters per second with uh, acceleration of over 20,000. That's pretty fast. Now, it does have a high temperature nozzle going up to 300 C. You're looking at a bed temperature up to 110 C. And this is supposed to be a clog free extruder. Now we've been printing and we've been printing and I have to tell you, I haven't had any clogs yet. So it's living up to what I would have expected. Now, other thing about this is that it's full metal build. This is a full metal build with die cast parts. It is literally the best, the best ender that I've ever had. Solid machine. Um, also, it has the chops to prove that it is fast and it's a contender. We're talking about good quality, really good quality, 13 minute, 13 minute, 13 minute benches. So it's the standard. Every single, uh, I would say, printer that you would get, you wanna see how fast it can print a benching and you can get a 13 minute one. That's pretty good. It also has a quick swap tri-metal nozzle. Um, XZ belt tensioning is done automatically. You don't have to worry about it. Um, accurate Z access for less wobbling. It comes with a PEI sheet, and it's gonna be able to print out a whole bunch of different types of materials. PLA, TPU, PETG, APS, PLACF, uh, PTGCF, CR carbon fiber. A lot of materials because of the bed temperature and also the actual nozzle. But I'll say up front, I didn't get into those materials because I know my home, given that it's an open frame model, is not gonna support it. Uh, these materials, as you start going into PTG, ABS, and the others, are susceptible to, I would say, colder temperatures. And if you're gonna be running those and you have a an airy home like mine, and we like it cold, uh, then I wouldn't basically uh, recommend that you have an enclosure around it, right? And then you'll be able to run these things. But in an open environment, it's just gonna warp. And I experienced some of that. So I really focused on PLA and TPU because those are the ones that are most friendly for the environment that I'm in. Nothing to do with the printer, just happens to be with my home. Um, also, it has AI camera technology that's optional. Now, when you hear the AI feature, it's something that we came to um, see in the K1 series, the K1, K1C, and the K1 Max. So it has those capabilities as well. So let's take a closer look at the printer. We'll take a look at its features. It is fast. The one thing I will say that it is so fast that when this printer zooms or zips from left to right, it's like a uh, RC race car where you hear the zip going across. So I'd say that if you're gonna be running this high speed, it's not gonna be quiet. Unlike some of the other printers that I would say that are more quiet, this one, because it's a speed demon, it has grumble, it has roar, and it goes fast. So just be aware if you're gonna have this in your home. Now, before we get into the Ender 3 V3, I wanted to go over some of the prints and things that we ran on the printer. Uh, we did a lot of the prints that were on board. Uh, for the first thing we did was a Benchy, and you can see what the Benchy looks like right here. Uh, this Benchy came out really nice for, again, for this type of printer and the speed. And by the way, all of the gray filament, all of the black filament that you see here is Polymaker uh, PLA matte. This is what we're using, except for that one right there, which is the basketball, which is uh, a Polymaker TPU material that I was using. So for the most part, these came out super fast and they came out with great quality. Can't complain at all at the quality. Now, in addition to printing, printing the benches, and I printed multiple benches, and I thought that the quality was really good, I went ahead and printed a core XY cube, right? So this is also on board just to see what it would look like and the quality, and I thought that it did really well. 
And then I also ran a test. Um, and let me go ahead and bring this on camera here so you can see it. So this is a test that's really looking at various things that are various test parameters. First of all, it's looking at tolerance levels. And I lost one of these little guys here. But the cool thing about this is that as it prints in place, these guys fall through as they should. And you can see all of the different uh, parameters that are being used right here. On this side on this test, you can see also what's being tested. You see here on the side. And then I actually broke two of these. These printed all the way to the top without any problem, but I kind of broke them off by mistake. And you can see that there's some light stringing. I haven't cleaned this up at all. And then you can see how the bridge effect uh, does right here really well without any kind of supports whatsoever. Uh, so again, all of this was pretty good. Notice also here, no supports going on and how far this thing is able to extend. Again, really, really nice quality. We also ran, and again, that's the PLA uh, Polyterra Matte PLA from Polymaker. Um, over here, we ran uh, this phone stand. Now this phone stand, I'm not a super fan. I'm sure I can tweak this and probably there's things I can do with the flow rate. Um, I don't really like the, the number of layer lines that I see here, right? But I'm sure I can tweak this up in the pro profile. So some playing will allow me to do this. I've been either using the Creality, uh, again, uh, Creality print software or using Orca Slicer. I'm trying to tweak things, trying to get everything where I need it to be because some things print really good and then others not so great. So here you can see this print right here. It is functional. It works as it should, but I don't like, again, the finish that I see here. And maybe you guys can see a little of that. We'll tap this to make sure that you can see that really good. Sorry for that wobble. So as you can see here, there are some layer lines that I really think that with tweaking that top layer and also the flow rate, I'm going to get a better print went ahead and now this is Creality Hyper PLA. Really love the fact that they sent me two rolls of this orange PLA. I think it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, filament color. Love the orange look. And the quality of this came out really, really nice. We did print the, the basketball, the airless basketball, because hey, that's what everybody is printing. And I can tell you straight off that while this looks great and you can see how nice this ball looks, uh, I now have, and I'm going to off camera separate it. I do have a candy dish bowl. Uh, this didn't really su su survive, I would say, my bounce test. Uh, it did survive my look test because I'll tell you, once this is connected, and we'll go ahead and put this back together, I think that the print came out beautifully. And this was printed on this machine. Again, supports came off really nice. So if you look at the bottom here, this is the support side. Look how nice this came off. Uh, this is just great. So nothing really stuck. And this was my second airless basketball that I printed. And again, this is using Creality Hyper Series PLA. And it just cracked. As soon as it hit the ground, it had no bounce. Uh, I also then printed, as you can see here, this ball here using TPU. This is again, uh, now this is a Polymaker TPU. This one does bounce a little bit more. And I was still struggling with the settings. And what I should do is I'll show you at the very bottom. I've got some fuzzies here that I need to clean off. But all in all, again, this really did a nice job on the print. So from a print perspective, I'm really happy with the overall quality that I'm getting from the printer. And as you can see next to it, I do have an Ender 3 uh, KE. And there's a lot that's very similar to this guy. We're going to go ahead and move some of these things out of the way so that you can get a better look at it. I'll move this over here. So from, from a bed perspective, you're talking about a similar bed, right? They did come with different build plates. But all in all, when you first look at the build size, they look the same. But there is a lot that's different. First of all, if we take a look at this for a second, uh, this is a, uh, I would say, a better metal construction than I, what I see right here. I really like the overall look. I like the aesthetics. And as we take a look at the back, you can see where all the changes are. Now, the back of the printer really shows how much it has in common with the K1 series. Very different than what you'll see over here. And some of the things that I'll highlight that I found that were um, a little bit troubling for me and I had some problems with is basically where all this cable, the cable management on the side. I ran into a couple situations where I was printing and the spool itself got tangled with this. Uh, you'll notice as we bring this down for a second that there are some uh, PTF tube holder right, support that goes all the way around. There's actually a little bracket that just came off uh, that I need to uh, place back on and just tie it down that holds this in place. But the way this support or the spool holder goes, 
is something that I think that should change, should be something that should be at the very top. And there's actually two screws here, right? So you would think that these screws would allow you to mount it to the top. It does come with a support bracket, but I took that off because it was causing problems with my prints. And I just didn't, you know, just, just found a couple tangles or some friction going on that really didn't do any justice to the prints themselves. So uh, here you'll notice that this is where the spool goes through. Here's your filament runout sensor. Goes through a very short tube uh, to the head here. And again, this, this prints incredibly fast. Now the KE also has, you know, the cable management coming over to the side. But the neat thing about this, or the difference in where I prefer how things are mounted here, is that you do have your filament run-on sensor at the very top versus being on the very side. And the, the spool is resting at the very top. So there's no real, I would say, tangle process that would go on when it comes to, again, the filament being fed. And I just like the fact that the filament just goes in from top to bottom. It just seems to work better. Now that Benchy that you saw took 13 minutes to print. Um, if we go back to the screen, this looks just like the K1C, K1 Max screen. So everything here is shared very similarly. You go in, you're able to adjust again. Uh, you... Now this screen is very similar. Now the menu system and the navigation is very similar to what you'd find on the K1C and the K1 Max. You go over here and you can see all your settings, your extruder, and then um, any kind of cooling that you're looking for. You can go in here and see all the prints that have been run uh, historically. So this is what you have local. This is what you would have if you had a USB. And then over here you have what's um, the history and what's in memory. And the cool thing about this is that you can actually access this uh, via uh, the browser as well. You have uh, various settings that you can adjust here. And it leads you to believe, because you notice that there's a camera setting right here, that there would be some type of attachment or some type of AI camera that you can connect to this. So um, I have a message out to my rep to find out if that's the case. You can see because of the AI functions that are there. So um, all in all, it looks like and it feels like from an interface perspective, just like a K1C or K1 Max. So guys, that wraps our review of the Ender 3 V3. And <laughs> did it bounce? No. But I'll tell you, I think I have candy bowls now. Yeah, I think I do. Still, love the print, and I'm keeping it. I think I'm going to glue it, though. But check out the Ender 3 V3.